What are the things that you do well as an athlete? What are your strengths? What I'm going to do is walk you through an exercise that you can use to truly identify your strengths as an athlete. But first, I want to talk about why it's so important to identify your strengths. But if you want to jump straight to the exercise, I've put it in the timestamp below. Now, there are three reasons why you want to identify your strengths as a player. The first reason is that when you know your strengths, this increases your confidence. I was talking with a player just last week about the idea of building his confidence. And I was likening his confidence to a tower of Legos. Now, this would be the most boring Lego, Lego thing you've ever built because it's just a tower that goes straight up. But every time you think about a good game or every time you play well, you add a Lego to the tower so the tower starts to grow. But it's not just good enough to play well in order for your confidence to grow. There's an element of reflection that has to take place. You have to look back on the things you've done well and you have to know that you can do them well again in order for you to truly start adding to the Lego tower and your confidence begins to be built. Now, knowing your strengths, what this does is it gives you something that you can fall back on, something that you can look to and know that I do these things really well. And since I know that I do them really well, I have confidence that I can go out here and do them well again. So they add to your Lego tower of confidence. They start to really build your confidence because you know what you do well. Another benefit of knowing your strengths is that you can play to your strengths. Now this one is important because every athlete has certain parts of their game that they do better than other parts of their game. Now for you, if you want to perform well consistently, consistent performances come from doing the things that you do best on a consistent basis at a high level. How you get to that point is you understand what you do best, what you do that's a strength of your game. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't want to work on other parts of your game, right? You don't want to improve the weaknesses or the weak areas of your game. But when you know that something is a strength and you play to that, all of a sudden your performance level will increase. An example of this is a soccer player who was struggling with 1v1s. He and I were working on becoming a little bit more physical, playing, with, playing through more contact. And while we were working on that, we also talked about this idea of playing to his strengths because he's a very smart player. So what he began doing was he was playing to his strengths, so he was playing smarter, where he tried to take certain angles or use his positioning to help in these 1v1s. He began having more success because he was playing smarter. He was playing to his strengths. Now, while he was doing that, he was also working on becoming a more physical player and not being so afraid of contact. And so he also saw that part of his game increase too. But the main idea is when he was playing to his strengths, he saw his performance increase because he was already doing the things that he did well but he was just giving more attention to them, so he was doing them even more during the games. And the third benefit of knowing your strengths is that when you do know your strengths, it makes improving easier. The reason that it makes improving easier is because naturally when you identify your strengths, it brings to light areas of your game that you wanna work on. So right there, you know the weaknesses, you know the parts of your game you're not doing that well, and so you can start working on those a bit easier. But also, it's so easy to nitpick yourself, right? It's so easy to criticize yourself. But if you try to improve, beginning with a starting point of negativity and frustration with yourself, it's less likely that you'll actually make the type of improvement that you want to make. Versus if you start from this point of confidence, this point of trust and knowing that I do these parts of my games are parts of my game really well. These are strengths of my game. When you start with that, with that in mind and that mindset, it makes improving on these weaknesses easier because you're not starting with the thought of, I'm not good enough. You're starting with the thought of, wow, these are the things that I really do well. I have confidence in these parts of my game. Just imagine if I actually worked on these. So you're probably gonna have more motivation to work on those weaknesses because you know how great it feels when you do have strengths. And so now you wanna turn those into strengths. So overall, when you know your strengths as a player, it increases your confidence. It's gonna help you play smarter so you can play to your strengths. And also it makes improving easier. Now, the exercise that you can use to really identify your strengths and identify your true strengths is going to come in three different steps. The first step is that you want to think about some really good games you've had recently. I would suggest choosing about three to five, but the bigger the sample size here, the better. Identify what are those games, right? What did I do well? Um, why did I, why did what I say that I played well? And I want you to just list out the main things that you, that you did well during those games. So what were some, some highlights of those games? An example might be if you are a basketball player, you'll say, you know, I scored a lot of points. Um, I had a few assists during those games. I really felt confident and I was cheering on my teammates and I was uplifting my teammates when they made mistakes. You might identify some things like that. 
if you are a baseball player, you might say that these games where I say I played really well, I'm noticing that I'm stealing a lot of bases, I'm, I'm getting on a lot, um, I'm playing good defense, so I'm tracking down balls in the outfield. The reason that you want to identify these good games is because your strengths that you have, the strengths that we're trying to identify, they are already there. It's not like we're trying to create these strengths, we're just trying to identify these strengths. And so to identify them, you need to examine good games you've played, because those good games will highlight your strengths. The reason that I said you want to have a, as big of a sample size as possible is because the next step is once you identify what these strengths or once you identify what these good games are and you identify why they were good games and you start to outline specific reasons that they were good games, those reasons, if you start to find a pattern between those good games and between the reasons why they were good games, well, those reasons are more than likely your strengths. So if a reason, as the baseball, for the baseball player example that I gave, a reason that the baseball player would say that he had good games was because he was stealing a lot of bases. So then stealing a lot of bases or speed is probably a strength for him. If you're a basketball player and you say that picking up your teammates was something that you noticed through all of these good games, then maybe leadership is a strength of yours. When you know your good games, then you know the reason why they were good games, and those reasons are consistent amongst those good games then those reasons are pretty likely going to be the strengths of your game. Now, step two of this process is where you want to think about the compliments other people have given you. Now, rarely do I give any sort of advice on worrying about what other people think. I, I work with a lot of athletes on not worrying and not caring about what other people think in their game because when you do worry too much about other people, this is where you see your confidence drop and we see fear and anxiety increase and just a lot of mental game challenges can form. But when we want to identify our strengths, Yes, we want to identify them for ourselves, so we want to think, what are my good games? What are the reasons that I had these good games? Because it's important for you first to identify and think, what do I do well personally? But you also want to think about what have other people complimented me on? So you might want to list out some, some recent compliments you've received from your coaches, from your teammates, from your parents, from your friends. And once again, you do want to get a bigger sample size with this, because if you just think about, you know, what have my parents complimented me on? For the most part, your parents will be very honest with you. But if your parents see something that your coach doesn't see or vice versa, it may or may not be a strength yet. It might be something you do well, but it's still something you probably want to work on and you probably want to give a lot of attention to and improve. But once you start to find similarities between the compliments other people have given you and the, the reasons that you had good games, going back to the first step that we did, that's where you really start to refine this list. So once you go through this second step, your list will be refined to the main areas of your game that are strengths because they are reasons that you've played well and they are, they are also strengths because other people have noticed that they're strengths within, strengths within your game. And then the third step of this process is that you want to test this in competition. The reason you want to test it in competition is because ultimately, you know, ultimately the goal of knowing your strengths is that you can play to your strengths. Yes, it will increase your confidence, like I said earlier. Yes, it will make sure that you are improving a little bit easier and you are giving more attention to some areas that you want to improve. But, you know, on, in a more immediate, on a more immediate basis, once you identify your strengths and then you focus on them during games, the ultimate goal is to have those strengths increase your performance. So you need to focus on these strengths in competition. Focus on them during games, give more attention to them, and see if they start to improve your game. If they don't start to improve your game, then you might want to go back and try to identify some other strengths that you can play to. But ultimately, once again, we want to know what your strengths are or you want to know what your strengths are so that you can play to your strengths and see your game improve. So go through this simple three-step process to identify what your strengths are as an athlete. If you have any questions about this video or would like me to cover any other sports psychology topic, please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos each week on sports psychology and mental training.